Welcome to unit number two. Sometimes students find this unit to be a little dry, but believe me, you are about to learn tools that could be useful in many situations. Business planning is an ongoing process of decision making that guides the organization both in the short and the long term. It also helps managers to take decisions and to develop goals before any action is taken. And remember, always think before you act. Planning takes place at three different levels without the firm, or even more if the company has different business unit. The first one that we will see in more detail takes place at corporate level. It is called strategic planning and is driven by the senior management within the firm. Then each individual function of the department develops one, and this is obviously where the marketing plan fits in. The marketing plan is defined by the CMO, the Chief Marketing Officer. Finally, one plan needs to get developed at the operational level. Think it this way. If I'm a brand manager from Procter & Gamble, the strategic and functional planning is not going to necessarily tell me what to do next Monday morning when I get to my office. I need a more detailed plan done at my brand level. This is the operation planning. In any case, the most important thing is that all these planning efforts need to be done within the firm, are consistent and are aligned with the mission of the company. By the way, this is easier to say than to do since sometimes different departments have different incentives and corporate politics are many times in place. But how do we go about developing the strategic planning? What are the different steps that we are going to be taking? First, we're going to be understanding the environment that we are going to operate. It is also called situation analysis. And we are going to analyze it for an internal point of view, which are my company's strengths and weaknesses, but also from an external point of view. What are the elements outside the firm that might affect my company, um, either positively or negatively? Um, the, the external elements, the opportunities and threats that we are going to be seeing are not <coughs> under control of the managers. But once we know about it, the good news is that we can plan around them. And this is what we call a SWOT analysis. Also, managers must consider elements such as the economy, the political, the cultural, and the technological trends. And this is what we call PEST. We use the PEST as the tool to analyze all these factors. Finally, chances are that um, we have some competitors within our um, arena, and we are also going to use the Porter's Five Forces to analyze the industry dynamics. Once we have a good grasp of the business environment, we need to define our vision and mission. And a very important thing about the, the mission is that it's not too narrow or not too broad. Because the mission is going to explain what business we are in and what customers we want to serve and how we should develop our capabilities and concentrate our effort. What is the reason that we exist? Finally, before we get into the strategic formulation, we need to define or translate that mission into the objectives. And remember this from the beginning. It's, these objectives need to be SMART, and SMART stands for a specific measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. So as you work in your project, be sure that once you define your goals, those are smart. You will hear me saying that over and over. And finally, after we have defined the mission and the goals, we need to think how we're going to achieve those. And that's what we call to define the strategies, how to make the growth we are looking for happen. Um, we use a couple of tools that we will discuss in more detail in class, the Boston Consulting Group Growth Matrix and the Product Market Entry Strategy. 
this is a very interesting um, matrix. The first quadrant that we're seeing here is called market penetration. And what we're doing in market penetration is basically trying to increase our sales by selling the same product into an existing market. When we talk about market development, what we are trying to do is selling our existing product into new markets. And when we talk about new markets, you can think of them from a geographical perspective. Let's say that we start selling in a new country, but you can also think of new markets such as a new segment that you were not targeting before. And that's the case of um, the we be targeted to seniors. Um, another approach to achieve growth could be to try to sell new product into a system market. So we engage in what we call product development strategy and we create new product. Um, and finally, we can also engage in, in a diversification strategy, which basically consists in selling new product into new market. So let me ask you, which one do you think is riskier for a firm? The second matrix um, that allow companies to take decisions about the portfolio and how to, to handle existing um, product or even consider new product is what we call the Boston Consulting Growth um, Matrix. And as you see, there are two axes. Um, the first one relates to the market growth. How strong is that um, overall industry growing? So it's not related specifically to our company, but the whole industry. And the horizontal axis is about our position within that um, industry. What is our market share? So that creates four different um, situations. So we talk about the starts when we have products that have a dominant market share in a high growth market. And because we have that dominant share of the market, stars um, generate large revenues, but also they require large amount of funding to keep up with production and promotion demands. If we go to um, the lower end, the cash cows, cash cows, we have a dominant market share in a low growth potential market. Because there is not much opportunity for new companies, competitors usually don't enter this market. We are well established and because we have a high market, it's obviously producing um, high revenue. A third kind will be the question mark and it's interesting they call um, this one sometimes the problem problem children and those are um, products that have low market share in a fast growth market and when we are in a question mark it's suggesting that the firm our company has failed to compete successfully uh, maybe because that product is offering fewer benefit than competing product or maybe our prices are too high or our distributor are not um, affected or even our advertising is not working. So you need to decide what is that you want to do um, with this kind of product that are, you know, um, consider question mark. And finally, the dog ones, which is a low, low, we have a product, um, in a market that is not growing. Um, and we also have a very, very slow market share. So the situation being is that is not profitable and probably you want to get rid of, um, of it. We just described briefly um, what it needs to be done at strategic planning. We, we saw the different steps. But what you need to think now, when you move from that strategic planning to the functional level, what is that we are going to be doing um, within the marketing department? And the steps that I'm um, writing here 
really follow the steps that we just saw for the strategic planning. Because when you go at the marketing department level, you still need to do a situation analysis and go back to use those tools you use at corporate level and apply them to the specific you know product or industry you're analyzing so remember your SWOT remember your PEST um, and once you feel comfortable with your understanding on the environment you set your goals your specific marketing goals and once again those need to be smart goals in our step number three we will develop the marketing strategies we will be clear in who is the target audience for our product and we will go in detail in each of the four P's that you are familiar um, with product place promotion and price finally you always want to establish in in your plan um, some measures to control and define your ROMI you will hear me repeating this a lot your return on your marketing investment so basically what we are going is from the current situation this is where we are and we are defining where we want to be and we are laying out the steps that the, we need to be taking to go from our existing situation to our um, ideal situation Thank you.